Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about functions and principles of chest drain. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. So, what is chest tube? Chest tube is a hollow flexible tube placed into the intercostal space which acts as a drain. Moreover, chest tubes are inserted in order to drain blood, fluid, air, etc. from the pleural cavity. Before knowing the functions and principles, we should have an idea about the layers of pleural cavity. Lungs are surrounded by pleura which have a layer of fluid between them. The visceral pleura is attached to the lungs and the parietal pleura is attached to the ribs. In order to recoil with the pleura, the lungs are elastic in nature and this elasticity creates the negative pressure which causes the lungs to inflate. Intrapleural pressure is always negative and it varies during inspiration and expiration. When this negative pressure is lost, it causes the lungs to collapse and hence a chest drain will be needed in order to restore the correct pressures. Now, let's discuss about the functions of chest drain. After the insertion of chest tube, following inspiration, there is increase in intrapleural pressure. As we discussed before, the normal intrapleural pressure is negative. If air or fluid enters the pleural space, then the intrapleural pressure becomes positive. This pressure makes the air and fluid move into the drainage bottle. This is because the intrapleural pressure is greater than plus 2 cm of water. So once the air and fluid moves into the drainage, the intrapleural space becomes negative again and hence the lungs can re-expand to the normal. Next comes the principles of chest drain. First comes gravity, next is underwater seal and the next is suction. So what is gravity? Gravity generally means movement from higher concentration to lower concentration. As we discussed before, because the intrapleural pressure is greater than plus 2 cm of water, the air moves from a higher to lower pressure. Generally, the drainage bag is placed below the patient's bed which allows this gravity. Next comes underwater seal. Underwater seal prevents backflow of air and fluid re-entering the pleural space. The distal end of the drainage tube will be submerged 2 cm under the surface level of the water of the drainage chamber. And this creates a hydrostatic resistance of plus 2 cm water in the drainage chamber. The underwater seal drainage bag has a marking line up to which water should be filled. If it is not filled, there may be chances of backflow. Next comes suction. Suctioning is needed when gravity drainage is not enough, patient's respiration and cuff are too weak, air leak is fast into the pleural space, and when there is a need to speed up removal from the pleural space. Last but not least, there are different types of underwater seal drainage system like single chamber, double chamber, and triple chambered. When suction is needed, we may need to use double or triple chambered. Mostly, triple chambered is used. In this video, we have discussed only about functions and principles of chest tube drainage system in detail. If you need more details about chest drain, we have video regarding ICD and you can find the link in the description below. So here you go with functions and principles of chest tube drainage system. If you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.